In this picture, we see three of the components of the election process. On the table, the, the laptop is, contains the WinEd's application, and this is used for preparing ballots and managing the election. To left of that is the HAT system, which is used for initializing voter smart cards. To the right, standing on its own, is the AVC Edge direct recording electronic voting machine. The attack begins when an attacker is able to put a USB key that contains a Trojan application in the pool of USB keys that are used to initialize the HAT system. The idea is that when an unsuspecting election official inserts the USB key in the WinEd's application laptop, the Trojan application is invoked as part of the auto run procedure. No noticeable event is produced when this happens. When the election official is preparing the ballots for the election, the Trojan application can detect whenever a results cartridge is inserted in the WinEd's laptop. At that time, it silently modifies the results cartridge with a vulnerability that will install malicious firmware on the AVC Edge whenever the Edge is rebooted. After the results cartridges are loaded with the infected election ballot, the ballot information necessary for initializing the smart cards is written on the USB key. The USB key is then inserted in the hat system to prepare the hat for initializing voter smart cards as needed. Before the election, the election official needs to load the ballots on the edge using the results cartridge. The election official starts by turning on the power and booting the edge. After booting is complete, the election official then inserts the results cartridge in the edge and prepares the edge for pre-election logic and accuracy testing, which is called pre-lat. The election official starts by pressing the load ballot button. The first thing that is done by the edge is that the loaded results cartridge is validated. Even though the results cartridge being used has been maliciously modified, it passes the validation test because the checksum values have also been modified. The result is that there is no evidence that the cartridge has been tampered with. After the results cartridge has been validated, it is copied to the internal storage of the AVC Edge direct recording voting machine. During the copying, the vulnerability is triggered and the firmware on the edge is replaced with a malicious version. There is no visible sign of the exploit. The pre-election lat is ready to begin. The election official begins by moving the open-close switch, which is on the back of the machine, to the open position. Again, the election firmware is successfully verified. The test voting can now begin. The election official inserts a voter smart card in the slot and begins voting. Okay, so this is done for a number of times and then the election official is ready to check the results. To do this, the election official sets the open-close switch to closed, and this finishes the pre-election testing. The test election results are tabulated and displayed. Because the malicious firmware can detect that the edge is in pre-lat mode, it behaves normally. The official prints the pre-lat results on the paper tape. During the entire pre-election process, there has been no evidence of the malicious software or firmware, even though the cartridges and the firmware have been validated numerous times. The polls are now ready to be open for the real election. The election official powers off the machine and closes it up. What we have seen so far is what normally takes place at a county office. That is, the machines are all prepared and loaded with the ballots, and then they are distributed to each of the polling places. Later that day or the next, a poll worker turns on the system power and waits for the edge system to boot. Eventually, the AVC edge completes its boot process, the Sequoia screen is displayed, and the edge then runs a verification on the firmware. 
the poll worker sets the open close switch to open. The machine is now ready for voters. In each of the following scenarios, the voter is going to vote for James P. Jim Gray for United States Senator. But the modified firmware is going to cast the vote for candidate X, which is denoted by a sequence of six X's. This is to make the changed vote as obvious as possible. The first scenario is a trusting voter. In this case, the voter checks the values displayed on the screen, but he or she does not check the values printed on the paper tape. The voter gets his smart card and inserts it in the edge. The voter then makes his choices on the ballot. After voting, the voter checks the displayed summary. The voter does not check the paper tape where his senatorial choice has been changed to candidate X. The second scenario is the careful voter. Unlike the trusting voter, the careful voter checks both the displayed summary and the summary printed on the paper tape. The voter gets his smart card and inserts it in the edge. The voter makes his choices. voter checks the displayed summary to assure that the votes are recorded properly. The voter checks the paper tape and discovers that his United States senatorial choice has been listed as candidate X. The voter voids his ballot. The paper tape is marked voided and the voter returns to the touchscreen system to fix his ballot. This time, everything is recorded correctly. The third scenario is a fleeing voter. 